you have your Bibles, I want to direct your attention to the book of Luke tonight. Amen. To the book of Luke. Uh, such wonderful uh, stories in this, in this passage here. Amen. Praise God. Luke chapter number 13. When you get there, please say amen. Praise God. Amen. And if you didn't bring your sword, we've got the sword on the wall. Praise God. So, praise God. Luke chapter number 13 and verse number 10 says, And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years. She had an issue for 18 years. Praise God. Brother Rodriguez, when I saw this scripture here, I noticed the years and the time length we have rented for 18 years, total plus. And I've seen this scripture, didn't look it up, but it just came to me of 18 years of renting. And there is so many good memories of renting where we were. Um, and I just want to stop and say this. God has a promise that he is not forgetting what he's going to do. And so I'm looking forward past 18 years and what God's going to do. I just wanted to put that in there. I don't know why, but I've just seen the 18 years and it just came. And was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Everybody say, thou art loosed, thou art loosed. from thine infirmity. Praise God. Amen. And somebody ought to say praise the Lord to that. And check this next scripture out. It says, and he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. So in other words, this is how she came to Jesus. And when the Lord tapped her on the head, she just went straight up. The Lord healed her of affirmities. Now there's two different types of affirmities. There's physical and then there's spiritual. But I'm going to get on both tonight. But the Lord has given me something for this very moment. And I want to entitle this message, This is Your Moment. This is Your Moment. Let's put our Bibles down and let's just pray and let's just ask God one more time to revisit us and to, for us to be receptive to His Word tonight. Lord, we love You tonight. We praise Your wonderful name. Hallelujah. We love You and we're asking You, God, that you would touch us tonight as we touch you tonight, God. Touch our hearts, our minds, our spirits. Touch our ears to be able to hear the word, God. Hallelujah. And be receptive to your word. And we praise your wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise before we're seated tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated tonight. In Jesus' wonderful name, praise God. Amen. Um, Christmas just passed, I'm, and I'm hoping everybody had a wonderful Christmas, a time where you can spend time with kids, your kids and your family. And uh, what I love about Christmas is just the face and the expressions on my children's face when they open up the, the gifts from Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, so to me, it's a beautiful moment. If we're talking about moments, that is one of my epiphany. That is my epiphany. That is something that I love to see that I, I just thought of that, that, that I love to see the moment of my kid's face when they're excited, not just on Christmas, but every other day in the house of God. It's just, it's just the expressions on, on, on their faces just excite me. And that should be exciting to every parent, to see the happiness on a child's face. Um, I, I recently just started to listen to a podcast here on, uh, the, uh, on the iPhone area, I guess you can say, from the Internet. Um, but I was listening to this, this podcast, and there was this guy who gets on there, and he's become so famous for asking this question, what was it, how did you start your business? How did you become so successful? How did you do it? That was his model. That was his title for everything. 
how he said, he said, he asked the questions, how he said, let me ask you, how was your reactions? Amen. What made you do that? What, what was it that made you successful and all this stuff? Uh, and really, it comes down to there has to be a moment. There has to be a moment. Amen. And his business is actually called a defining moment, a defining moment. Moments are important, folks. They're really important. Uh, you can take a moment too lightly because not all moments are created equal. They're not. They're, they're just not. But a moment is, is, is special. And when that moment occurs, you know something is different here. You just know. You, you feel like, okay, something's great. Something is literally happening right now. It's a moment that I'm having. And I want to tell us all at some point in our lives, there's going to be a moment that's going to come to your life. There's going to be a moment. Amen. And it's not just one time thing. Uh, you'll come to a moment where you'll have to react into that moment. Praise God. You'll have to have a reaction. And your reaction will detect, it, it will detect, uh, dictate what happens afterward. Uh, whether you choose action in that moment, uh, whether you choose to let it pass you by, uh, but it'll dictate the course of your life on whether you react positive or negative, there's going to be a reaction into a moment, and a defining moment doesn't come every single day, folks. Doesn't come every day. They come every once in a great while. Amen. And you have to be sensitive. You, you have to be ready for it. You got to be ready for those moments that come because so much is dependent on this moment. Amen. Uh, whether you realize it or not, uh, it's going to be a moment. Praise God. It's a moment. There's uh, a lot that is riding uh, at stake that is at stake at this moment. So there's a lot that's going on. And let me just stop here and tell every one of you your life can change. By a single moment. Your entire life, it can change by a single moment. It, it don't matter what it is. Um, what do you mean by that, Pastor? I, what I'm saying is, your life can actually change by a single phone call. You can receive a phone call and your entire life can change right there. Whether it's for the good or whether it's for the bad. Your life will change. That is a moment that you will have. Amen. Amen. You can get a letter in the mail that can change your life. It will change your life if you get a letter in the mail it, it, uh, uh, or on your door. Uh, uh, anything can happen upside down. I remember as a, as a child growing up, going from, from hut home to, to sectional homes and, and all this stuff. And I remember coming home one time and with my parents, and I was just a, little, little, just a little boy. And I remember seeing this big old letter on the door and big red letters that said eviction notice. And just that notice made an impact on my, my life. And it, I didn't really understand it, but I knew it made me sad because it made my parents sad. And we were locked out, and we couldn't get our stuff until the sheriff and all this stuff came. So that was a moment that, that changed the course of our, our past, of our lives, just, just by walking up our own house. That changed everything. So your life can change by anything that could happen. Anything could happen. You can, go to, you can go to your job and be let go. That can change your life. You can walk in and everything's great. There's a box of donuts there and your boss says, we're going to have to lay you off. We laid 25 people off this week when you came up. That can change the finances course in your life. So a lot of this stuff, I mean, in a moment, uh, you can turn your life around. You really can. In a moment, you can change the direction that you're traveling in. And I, and I thank God for the options that God has given you and I. He's given us opportunities that we can take. You could either take the road to Damascus or you can take the road to high heaven and say, God, I'm going to give everything to you. But once you do give yourself to God, you're giving God the actual final moment, the defining moment where he can change your life. You can't change your own life. God can change your life. There's too many people that think, well, I can change the course of my life. You may can. You probably can. You, you, you can. But you know what? I'd rather stand on the promises of God than the promises of man trying to tell me what I'm going to do, what I'm not going to do. Praise God. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In our text tonight, Jesus is teaching in a synagogue. And in a sense, it's life as usual when he's talking about this. He's, he's just uh, going about God manifested in the flesh, um, healing people. He's preaching. He's teaching. He's doing all these wonderful things. If you read this portion of Scripture, this is what really got to me when I read this. It doesn't mention anything about what he even taught in the synagogue. If you read this for yourself, he doesn't, he doesn't explain what he's actually talking about. It just said that Jesus is preaching in the synagogue. So we don't, we don't know what in the world he's, what he's even talking about here. There's, a, there's not a lot that's even mentioned about it. And, and I often wonder concerning this passage, what he was even teaching that, that day. What was he talking about? We have in Luke 4, uh, where he was in a synagogue for, for there, uh, we, we can see he was preaching from the book of Isaiah. He read and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Praise God. To the poor, he had sent me to heal. To the brokenhearted, he preached deliverance. To the captives and, and, and recovering sight to the blind. This is all everything he said. To set liberty to the, the bruised. And I just wonder what he was teaching on that day. What in the world? Whatever it was, all I can see is when I go towards the end, it was very effective what he was preaching and what he was teaching. Whatever he taught, whatever he taught, the Bible says he was glorified throughout all the teachings. You can't glorify somebody who's got a weak note speaking. Unless, well... You could have a preacher like the red eyes guy. <laughs> Praise God, everyone. Clear eyes. Praise God. Thank God your pastor's not monotone like that. <laughs> I think we ought to stay passionate in the Word of God. How about you? I really do. Brother Bob, thank you for preaching so passionate last week because it's passionate that captivates and creates faith inside of us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. But I do want to stop here to say this. There's no other place I would rather be than in the place where there's preaching and teaching and praising and worshiping of the true one living God, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Why, Pastor? Well, it's because it's a place where you can actually find direction. Hallelujah. If you don't come to church, you don't find direction for that hour. Praise God. What are you saying? Church is the only place? No, God says I'm not, I'm not present. I'm everywhere. You can find God. I know people who got the Holy Ghost in the restroom. They got the Holy Ghost in the shower. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is just... This is just walls. But what the church is, the church is you. The church is the body of Christ. It's you. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So I, I, I'm, just, I, I'm just so impacted by, amen, the word of God. Uh, I'm so glad I came last week to hear Brother Bob preach. And um, I'm so glad to have preachers that, that are on fire for God. And I'll tell you what, an effective preacher is a person who prays, who talks to God. Amen. I don't care how professional you guys are. I don't care how professional the music might try to be. Don't ever get too professional over God. As long as the anointing is there. That's all that matters. It's just the anointing. You can be nervous as I'll get out. You can hit the wrong keys. You can hit the wrong beat. You can sing the wrong tone. But if you've got the anointing of the Holy Ghost and you've got God on your side, that's all that should really, really matter is the fact that you've got God on your side and the Holy Ghost moves through you. Too many of this, well, we got to be professional. we got to look right, walk right, talk right, dress right. No, 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 no. All that matters is that you are right with God. And God will do the rest. Hallelujah. And it pour the increase. Praise God. Jesus. So keep coming to church. You never know. There's a word for you. There's an impacting word from God. Amen. That is needed for you. Because why? That is 
your moment. You don't want to miss it. Praise God. Amen. Can I just say this? You can't go wrong being in the presence of God. You can't. Why question it? Why even say, well, you know, uh, no, praise God. Where the word of God is going forth, there's nothing wrong. Amen. But this woman enters the scene. And Luke, being a physician that he is, or was, by trade, um, that's what he did. He's the only one that noted this woman in the Gospels. We only see this instant in Luke. He, he notes her physical condition if you read this in the Word of God. He's probably diagnosing her as he's looking at her in the face and saying there's, there's this, there's that, and all these things that are going, going on in your life. And uh, uh, what's interesting is he also mentions that her condition was not just physical, but there was a spiritual affirmity about her. Infirmity. And let me just tell you, that word infirmity, that word means weakness. It means disability. It means uh, uh, that she had something wrong with her. Now, I ask myself, what was this woman like? What was she depicted as with all these other people? We have little information on her concerning this portion of Scripture that talks about her. And it's just kind of where, uh, and, and put before us, but, but I wonder how this woman must have felt that day. How did she feel? What was her actions? A woman who the Bible says who's gone 18 years of suffering, of infirmities, her condition, it was so bad. She came, amen, to the house of God. And that was her first right move, was going to church. That was her first move. Maybe she came before. I don't know. She probably really did, or maybe not. Uh, we don't know. But the good thing is, she was where she needed to be. She was in the right place at the right time. Now, I don't know if she was hopeful in, in her condition because it's been 18 years, 18 years of solid de uh, this pain, this infirmity. And uh, I don't know what, what her frame of mind was even at this point, but, but she had a physical condition to a spiritual condition. Her condition was affecting each other, vice versa, back and forth. Her spirit was her affecting her physical. Praise God. Some don't understand that. Some say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't make sense. Did you know that your posture has a lot to do with your psychology, your psychology, whole mindset? Yeah, it does. Everything that goes on the, on the top. Goes down to the bottom. How you think about yourself. I knew a guy who used to walk around like this. And would you believe it? He was 99.9% .9 depressed all the time. He was always depressed. And his posture spoke loud for him. Well, that's depression. It's depression. You ain't going to see me walk inside the house of God like this. I guarantee you when you walk through the gates of heaven and God opens up the book of life and says, well done, thy faithful servant. Thou been faithful over a few things. You're not going to be like this. Oh, no. In fact, you know what's interesting about that portion of Scripture? The Bible says there'll be 30 minutes of silence in heaven. I'm telling you, if you want this hubba bubba to be quiet for 30 minutes, if I see Jesus, you can't shut me up. If God knows, if I know, if I figure out where I'm at, woo, there's no telling what's going to happen. Oh, we're all going to be there 30 minutes. That's Jesus. Don't start a riot. I'm going to be the first one in trouble in heaven. Praise God. Y'all settle down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. But I can only imagine she, was, she wasn't very high on herself. She wasn't. She wasn't very high. 
She was probably a broken woman. In fact, she was most likely ashamed of herself. Oh, I'm so shameful. She was ashamed of her condition. She probably tried to mingle and bond with other people just to fit in. Well, I need to, I need to blend myself in the crowd just to get in that very moment. I need to do that. Just hoping she can hear or hoping she can see what all the commotion was about. What everything was happening in that moment, in the synagogue, in that service. But there was something in her, I believe, that there was a desire inside of her spirit to go to the house of God. There had to be something in her that drew her there. And I believe it was God that was drawing her. I believe it was. The Bible says you have to be drawn by his spirit. Except the spirit of God draws him. You can't be drawn unless the Holy Ghost draws you. Hallelujah. It's not a coincidence because God is a moment maker, folks. He's the ultimate opportunity maker. When you least expect it, he can make an opening and create a door for you to just walk through it. That's right. That's right. Said, so, okay, I, I'm going to lay it all out for you. I'm going to give you all the, the tools necessary. Praise God. Did you know that Jesus knows every single one of your needs tonight? He does. He's not dumb. He knows exactly what you need. He knows if there's a financial need, he knows what you need. He knows if there's a job, he knows what you need. He knows if there's a relationship, a marriage, a, a whatever it is, God knows exactly what you need. God knows. He knows everything that you need in this life. Praise God. Before you even bring it up to him, he already knew. He knows everything before you even bring it. Oh, God, I got this problem. God says, Psh, I got you covered. I know exactly what you're going through. In fact, my Bible says he knew you before you were even born. He knew everything. He knows your path, destiny, everything you got to do. And that's why God says, forsake not the assemblies of yourself. These are the ones that are going to help and guide you and direct your path. Because I'll speak through them. Praise God. But I want to tell you, the, the interesting thing here in verse number 12, if you look at verse number 12, it says Jesus called her to him. He called her, woman! Praise God. Verse 12, when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. Jesus sees you in your very moment in life. And he's watching you every single day. God don't get tired like you and I do. He don't have a bedtime. He don't have a... He don't, have a, he don't have a clock in time. He don't punch in and out. He's every single day watching us over us. Hallelujah. You're the apple of his eye. Praise God. I'm almost 40 years old, and I still don't know what that means, but bless God. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I know it means that they got your eye on you. And that's God. God does. He has his eye on you. He does. He has his eye on every single one of you because he loves you. He loves every single body in this building right now. Everybody. You can curse them. You can fight them. You can push them. You can hate other people. God still loves you. He still loves you. I really don't, I don't care where you came from, where, what your background is. He loves you today, and he's kept his eye on you since the day of birth. Or before birth. Praise God. But the Bible says of several times people being called to God. And that's normal. We see it in Jeremiah 33. And it says, call unto me and I will answer thee. And show thee great mighty things. Hallelujah. We see where in Psalms David made mention. Where, where he called out to God and asked to deliver him in times of trouble. God, deliver me in the times of trouble. But it's one thing for you to call on God, but it's another when God calls on you. Hallelujah. Praise God. When God reaches you, amen, he might slow down just a little bit, but he knows how to get your attention. He does. He knows how to get your attention. He knows how to get a hold of you. Amen. 
In fact, God doesn't mind stopping you and shaking your world and turning it upside down just to get a hold of you. God doesn't mind that at all. When, you're, when you get in the absence of God and you begin to... You begin to put the course of God on the back end of the, the ropes and begin to put him second instead of first. I'm telling you, God is like a jealous ex-girlfriend from high school. <laughs> oh, you're going to walk with her? Well, I'll tell you this. God will slap you around a little bit. Like, oh, God. Hey, thank God a God cares enough to stay, to keep us out of the pit of hell and to bring us into the kingdom of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just thank God for it, what he can do. Amen. But I'll tell you this. It could all happen in a single moment. It could happen in a single moment. Praise God. It could happen. Anything is possible with God. I seen a meme the other day, and it had this fat guy on a couch and burgers and fries and all this stuff, and it had a buff guy with six-pack abs, and the guy looked at the big fat guy on the couch and said, you ain't going to get abs like this. Keep eating those kind of foods. And the fat guy says, with God, all things are possible. <laughs> you talk about faith. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> he said, todo, things. <laughs> hey, my, my Spanish is getting better. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If my grandmother, my TJ grandma, we call her TJ grandma, if she, if she knew I didn't speak Spanish today, she lives in, well, she moved to Virginia, she would rip me in half. This is my, my dad's side, and uh, we hadn't seen her in a while. We we're supposed to see them, but uh, she's literally, uh, she don't even speak English. I don't even know if she speaks it today, but I remember before she didn't, but she would be mad. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But I, I can define the moments. I can really get into those moments because you have, a, you have a story. Everybody in this house has a story about a moment that God has placed in your, your life. You have a moment with God. You have a moment in your walk with God. I can say that one of my greatest moments in my walk with God that I can remember right now is the day that God confirmed my calling to the ministry. And I was only 16 years old. And I remember I was turning 17, and everybody in the church, it seemed like, you're called to preach, you're called to preach. Well, I have never even put a microphone in my hand. How do you know I was called to preach? No one ever seen me preach before. In fact, I was in special education. How am I going to be called to preach at that time? See, when I got the Holy Ghost, God increased my, my brain. I got a little bit smarter. <laughs> but there's no way. I, people said, you're called to preach. I was like, no way. I don't wear alligator skin shoes, and I don't wear suits and stuff like that. There's no way I can. That's not, that's not being called to preach. But I knew I had a hunger for God. I, was desi I desired the Holy Ghost, and I won everybody that I saw. I didn't care who you were. I didn't care if you were Muslim, black, white, brown, pink. I was telling you about the oneness of the Godhead in Acts 2.38. Brother Jeremiah told me in the back, he said, Oh, Pastor, I was telling these people about Acts 2.38. He says, Acts 2.38. And they said, What's that? And he says, I don't remember the scriptures. But, man, that's what it is. It's powerful. That's powerful because that, that's exactly how I was. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I remember I, I, I was just, I was praying about it. My, my pastor said, you're called to preach. And I'm like, no, I was running from it, and I didn't want to preach. I said, no, that's not for me. And God was saying, yeah. And so I was very specific with God. I said, God, I need a moment with you right now. And I told God, in prayer, in the middle of service, God is my witness. I said, God, if you're calling me to preach, I'm going to go to the altar, and I'm going to pray. And if you are calling me to preach, I want you to call, I want you to take Brother Greiser, who was, a lame, who was a minister in the church, and I want you to take Brother Webb, who was my pastor, and I want you to have both of them lay hands on my back, and I want, you to, I want you to impress on them to pray, God, you're calling him to the ministry. And I said that because I said, God, if that's what you're saying, then you will make that happen. And I got on my knees, and I got on the altar, and I started praying in my mind. And I said, Lord... 
And before the next word came out, I looked up and there was two hands pressed on my shoulders. And I looked up and it was Brother Greiser on my left and it was Pastor on my right. And they were both praying, Lord, use this man. You have called him to the ministry. Let it be confirmed today. And Lord, I thank God because it was a moment that I'll never forget. When God calls you, you got to respond. I'm not just talking about to the ministry. I'm talking about when God says, hey, I'm talking to you. I'm calling you. I'm trying to reach you. You see, it's one thing to call on him, but it's another when he's calling on you. When he's saying, I'm calling you. I'm calling you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It doesn't matter who or what he has to use. God will reach you. He'll do whatever he has to do to get a hold of you. Whatever he has to do. But we see that he called her. And he told her, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmities. He spoke in the present. He spoke it as it already even happened. This already occurred. And this woman, she was bowed together. She was bowed together. I did read where a place where she had scoliosis or spinal uh, condition, some sort of issue uh, that caused her back to become severely bowed over. Uh, I did read this, and, and I believe that she was affected physically, but more so it was a spiritual problem that she had. Your physical can affect your spiritual because there is a physical spirit, and it could affect your spirit. It could, it could affect your, your, your walk with God. And I believe that there are people in today, in Las Vegas, that are spiritually bowed over. Even if you're a child of God, you can still be spiritually bowed over. It can happen to anybody. Just because you got the Holy Ghost doesn't mean you're fully righteous and you got to fight for God. You got to keep digging something out for the kingdom of God. It don't just stop. It's not a it's not a cruise ship. It's a battleship. You got to stay on your toes and you got to stay pressed in the Holy Ghost and and do everything that you have to do. Do you know that I was reading this the other day? Twenty percent. I was reading the statistics of college students that twenty percent of college students are depressed. Twenty percent. That's one out of five, isn't it? Is that one out of five? Yeah, that's one out of five. Twenty percent of college students. Are suffering from depression. And uh, you think about the numbers, and really they begin to stack up. They just get, they get bigger and bigger. Depression, oppression, that affects a person, it affects an individual because it's real. Depression is real. There's people that fight it, and there's a spirit behind it. And we've got to battle that thing. Praise God. Amen. And you look at these people, and all they do, they look depressed, oppressed, and they look broken. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to find an exit for their problems to, to get out. Hallelujah. But that was the condition she was in. That woman couldn't make it on her own. Just like you couldn't make it on your own spiritually. We can't. That woman visited doctors, and they couldn't help her. She visited psychologists, and they couldn't help her. She, she visited all these people, and nobody could help her. And, and you can do the same, but, but you can't help yourself to the extent that God is going to help you. You've have made, you, you, you've probably been trying to do it yourself year after year after year. You may have been trying to lift up yourself Every single time after service, after service, trying to lift myself up. And you think, my God, something has to change. Something's got to give. Something's got to bud. Something has to happen. I've been trying, and I just can't do it on my own. I just can't seem to break this cycle. I can't seem to get out from under this bowed down spirit. Hallelujah. I, I can't. There's no way. I remember, I remember we was in church one time, and, and I remember looking, and there was this big, huge guy, 375 pounds. He was running the aisles in the service. 
And he was so wide. He wasn't like this fat. He was like this fat, like sideways. <laughs> and he, was, he, had, he had a physical condition. He was really wide. He had special tailored pants. And when he ran the aisles, we had a small little building. It was like half this size of the church. And we had the slate. We had pews. And when he ran the aisles, he, he ran up the aisle like this. And he ran, when he went in between the pews and the wall, he ran sideways like this. And he'd run around. And I was only 16 or 17. And I remember cutting up when I saw that. I said, Pff. And the elder next to me, he pinched my elbow. Ow. He puts his arm around me. He said, son, you see that guy? I said, yeah. He said, God delivered him from manic depression. And I thought, is that why he's so excited? You better believe that man will run. That man will make a fool out of himself for Jesus. Because if God, amen, delivered you from your disease, from your condition, whatever it is in your life, you, you can't tell me that you would sit there and just, well, thank you. No, you would literally get out of your pew and you would shout and you would jump and you would dance and you would praise God like there's no tomorrow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I, he, he really, he nailed my heart, I'm telling you. Uh, when he told me that, I felt bad for laughing. I just said, oh, man, that, that's awesome. I never want to take God for granted. I never want to take the Holy Ghost for granted. Amen. But how many times have you walked out of service after a move of God, and you've consecrated things to God, but not been able to just get that touch that you're spiritually wanting. There will be a moment when you have to decide. You have to make up in your mind and decide, I'm going to answer the call from God. I may come at the end of a service or it may come in a prayer room or in your house. But your moment, listen, is when God calls you. When God calls you. He calls you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The woman was delivered not because she stood there, but because she lifted up herself and answered the call. Hallelujah. Do you all remember the story of the lady that touched Jesus' hem of his garment? And do you remember when he was just walking? And the story goes that she was trying to get through the crowd. She was like, man, I, she, was, she was trying to get to that 76-inch television on Black Friday. And when she finally met up with Jesus Christ, the Bible says she could only touch the hem of his garment because that's, that's as far as she can get. She can reach him. She said, there, there he is. If I could just touch it. And when she touched it, the Bible says virtue came out of him. And he stopped and said, somebody touched me. And everybody, Paul, Peter, and everyone... Lord, we're all around you, everyone. There's thousands. He said, no. Somebody touched my heart. Somebody, somebody got a hold of me. Hallelujah. Somebody got on their knees and they begged and they cried and they said, God, if I can just reach you. I'm telling you, if that's your portion of way of reaching God tonight, there's no telling. The Word of God says it's unlimited what God can do for you in your condition. We're so spoiled. We're so spoiled. We're, well, there's the altar. There's church. I think I'll just stay home. I'm all right. I'll go to church next Sunday. You're not promised tomorrow. 
That's why the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time for you to approach the hour time of God. You can't put God on hold. You can't put him on a back burner. But you got to get the desire back in your heart and you got to answer the call of God. When God talks to you and he's reaching for you, stop staring at him and stop wondering and just say, God, woman, thou art loosed. What? Because that's your defining moment. Musicians, if you come, I'll... let's stand together. This is your defining moment. Your, let me tell you what your defining moment is. An old-fashioned altar when God is calling you. When God is saying, I'm going to touch your heart. If you've been in this service tonight and God has tugged on your heart, that is a defining moment that God has placed on your life. He's given you a moment. He may not be here physically calling you, Man, woman, thou art loosed of thine infirmities. But he is calling you in the spirit. He is reaching you. He's walking up and down these pews in these aisles. And he's trying to touch your heart. And he's trying to bring you back, amen, to the place where you first touched him before. He's trying to reach your spirit. He's trying to heal your infirmities. It's not the devil that's stopping it. It's this exterior thing called the flesh. It's carnality that is stopping your very blessings of God. That's saying, I'll go, I'll go to the altar next week. I'll ask for forgiveness next Sunday. I'll tell my brother I love him next week, but not today. I'll tell my sister I'm sorry, but I don't want to do it today. But God is saying, I have touched you. I have called you for this very moment. Hallelujah. This is your defining moment. This is your moment that I'm calling you right now. If you can hear the voice of God, he's saying, step out. Step out and stop ignoring my hand. Stop ignoring my spirit. I'm trying to reach you tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of the greatest moments in my memory is seeing people getting filled with the Holy Ghost. That's a moment that's unspeakable. How do they get it? They came to an old fashioned altar consecrated, brought the families together hand by hand. Lord, one more time you're calling me. God's saying this is your moment. I'm calling you right now. Thou art loosed of thine infirmities. Thou art loose of your disease. Thou art loosed of your problems. Thou art loosed of your difficulties in life. If you just answer the call, if you just answer the voice of God and let him speak to your spirit tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you what a defining moment is for an angel? It's not when somebody's healed. It's not when God uses an angel. It's when one sinner comes to an altar and repents of his sins. The Bible says uh, that multiple angels rejoice in heaven over one sinner. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Reach, reach, reach. Press, press, press in the Spirit tonight. Press in the Holy Ghost tonight. Allow the Holy Ghost let loose. Uh, tear away all your pride. Let your pride go. Let your, let your thoughts go. Let everything loose. Uh, and open up yourself beyond measure with the Holy Ghost tonight. Allow God to use you and move you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, uh, even as many as the Lord God shall call. Save yourselves uh, from this untoward generation. <laughs>